Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We're gonna be talking all about job dependencies. So this video is basically um, expanding upon some of the concepts that I introduced in my introduction to the C-sharp job system video, where I basically just kind of introduced the C-sharp job system and talked about how it works basically on a high level. Now I'd highly recommend that you go watch that video if you haven't done so already, just so you're caught up to speed with everything. But real quickly, the reason that we have job dependencies is so we can kind of guarantee that when we're accessing certain bits of data that it is safe for us to access and it's not being accessed by another job. Now, basically what I mean by this is the job system runs on multi-threading. So different threads in our computer, different processor cores are essentially performing work on certain amounts of data. And sometimes we want these different threads to be accessing the same data. Unfortunately, we're gonna run into some issues if multiple threads are trying to access the same bits of data because we don't know, you know which thread is exactly gonna run before the other. So that's something known as a race condition. So basically to get around this, we put the data that we want to use in what's known as a native container. And this native container is gonna allow us to move data back and forth between managed and unmanaged code. And with these job dependencies, we can basically guarantee safe access to the data inside these native containers. And if it doesn't make that much sense to you right now, don't worry, I'm gonna be explaining things as I go along in this video. So by the end of today's video, you're gonna have a better understanding of how job dependencies work in the C-sharp job system. Now, I have a bit of a confession to make. The project of today's video is a pretty boring project. It's all code. There's not a whole lot of stuff Stuff happening in the Unity editor. Um, in fact, the stuff playing behind me is just for show right now. And while I'm not gonna be making that today, it's basically a representation of what you can do with the C-sharp job system. So actually behind me is a game that I made for a game jam game uh, using the entity component system. If you want a little bit more information on how I made that, uh, check out this video where I kind of go over all that stuff. And so I don't have a lot of exciting stuff happening in the Unity editor and also kept the code pretty simple. So the jobs we're doing are just basic arithmetic. The reason for that is I didn't want you to like focus on some crazy complex stuff that we can do with uh, the job system. Right now, I just want you to focus on dependencies, which is what we're talking about today. So once you have a better understanding of dependencies, then we can start implementing this into ECS and then doing more fun and exciting things with them. So today's video, it may look a little bit bland on the surface, but it is really important to understand these concepts if you want to start using ECS and the C-sharp job system. Uh, by the way, I do have the project files available to download you can do that in the link in the description below and while you're down there I'd also really appreciate if you hit that like button also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on the c-sharp job system the unity entity component system and the data oriented technology stack just all sorts of cool things coming to the unity game engine all right so anyways let's jump over into unity and like I said there's not a whole lot going on in here um, so basically we're just actually gonna be in the console. That's the only reason that we're gonna need to jump over to Unity. So all I have in the scene right now is one object that um, we can hold our job dependency script on it. So I've called it the jobject. And the only script that we have is this job dependency script. So we'll go ahead and open this up here. So you'll see that just at the top, we're including the unity.collections library. This is gonna allow us to access um, native arrays. Of course, we're gonna need to be using the unity.jobs library as well as unity engine. So moving right along, we're gonna start off with an integer, which is the initial number, which we're gonna set equal to four. And so when we do our math calculations, we're basically gonna start with the number four for all of these. So moving right along, here's where we actually define our jobs. I have a total of five of them right now. So this is the add to job, so it essentially takes in a number, adds two to it, and returns it to the results container. So you'll see that this is a public struct, which again, we've named add to job, and it implements the iJob interface. With the iJob interface, it just needs this public void execute method, and so this is what's actually ran when our job is executed. So you'll see I have two public variables. I have a public integer x and I have a public native array of type int and I'm gonna call that the results container. So the reason these two are public is because when we actually schedule our job, we're actually going to be setting these values here. So in the case of this x variable, we're gonna be setting it to the number four because that's our initial number. And then when we want to access our result, we need to access our a result from the native array. So we're going to store the result inside this native array so we can access it from outside this job. So it's not like a function where we can just return the result from it. 
we have to store it in a separate place so that we can access it from again both managed and unmanaged code so anyways you can see that right here we'll just set result container at position zero equal to x plus two now moving along for the multiply three job it's pretty similar um, this time around we're not taking in an integer here we just take in this uh, native array for the results container and we're going to look at whatever is at position zero and we're going to multiply that by three and set it back to position zero so moving along we have this sub four job so it pretty much does the same thing as the multiplication job except this time it uh, subtracts four from the result and returns it to the result. So this next one is the add numbers job and it takes in public integers for X and Y as well as a native array for our results. And you'll see that basically it just adds X and Y and returns it to the first uh, element of that results array. And then finally we have the add results job. This one's slightly different than the one above it because we basically here we just take in two native arrays we have the result container one and the result container two what we're going to do in this case is set the value of result container one at position zero equal to the value of result container one at position zero plus the value of result container two at position zero so it's slightly different and i'll show you why we do that when we actually get to that spot in the code so that's just a brief overview of all the jobs and then down here here's where i actually have um, the five different implementations of them here. So basically the way I have it is when I press the number one key, this first bit of code is going to execute. When I push the number two key, the next bit of code is going to execute and so on. So let's dive into the first one here. So this is uh, the main thread uses results from the addition job. So here we just create our native array. Again, this is of type integer. We'll just call it result. So we'll set this equal to a new native array type integer. And then here, first we need to pass in the length of the native array. Of course, just because we have this one single element that we need, we're gonna pass in the number one here. And then we also have to specify the allocator type. So if we're using this native array in jobs, we have to use at least the allocator type of temp job. So there's a couple different allocator types that we can use. The allocator type of temp only lasts for one frame or less. The type of temp job lasts for four frames or less. And there's also an allocator type of persistent, which acts lasts through the entire duration of our application. So in general, when we're using native arrays for jobs, we're gonna use the temp job. So next we need to set the values that we want in our job. So we'll call the add to job, we'll call it addition job. So we'll set this equal to a new add to job. And then this basically here, you notice this is actually essentially all one line. We end the semicolon right here. And so you'll see me later in the examples i basically just put this all in the same line because i just have one variable set um, but you can also separate these out just make sure you add a comma in between these actually don't need this comma at the end so anyways you'll see that here we set this value x equal to the init num then we set our result container equal to result which again is this native array right up here so moving right along you'll see that we create this job handle right here we'll call it the addition handle and we'll set this equal to addition job dot schedule. So this basically schedules the job, it puts it in the uh, the job queue. So one of our worker threads can pull this job from it when it's available. Now we need this job handle so we can ensure completion of it. So the way we actually do that is we say addition handle dot complete. And then so this basically means that we can't actually go past this line right here until this job up here has been completed. Now, if we didn't have this line right here and we go to access our results native array, we'd start getting a bunch of errors because that native array is still uh, essentially open for editing within our job. So this talk complete right here basically closes the native array for editing from that job so we can now access it from the main thread. So then I just have this debug statement where I can print the results out to the console. So again, that's just the initial number we add to with our job and then we print the results out from the uh, results array here. And lastly, we just need to make sure that we dispose our native array or else we're gonna get some type of memory leaks and we're gonna run into all sorts of errors and um, no bueno. So anyways, going back to Unity, if I just hit the play button here, when I press the number one key, you see that it prints out four plus two equals six. So that first example wasn't necessarily a job dependency in the traditional sense, this one is more of a traditional job dependency where we have a multiplication job that depends on the results of the addition job. So again, we'll just define this one native array called result. 
And then so we'll go ahead and initialize the values of our addition job here. So of course we'll set X equal to the initial number and we'll set the results container equal to this result native array. Again, we'll just create a job handle for it and we'll just go ahead and schedule it passing in no values here. Now for our multiplication job, it's gonna be a little bit different. All we need again is the results container because it's going to take what is the first value of the results container and it's gonna multiply that by three and return it to the first value of the results container. Now for the multiplication handle, it's a little bit different. So basically what we have to do here is we'll say multiplication job dot schedule. And here we actually pass in the addition handle. So again, this is the handle that we defined up here when we scheduled our addition job. So this is basically how we can define dependencies. So this means that the multiplication job is not going to execute until the addition job has already completed its work. Because again, if there were ever some case where the multiplication job ran before the addition job, then we could end up getting a different result than desired. So lastly here, when we wanna access the final results, we call the multiplication handle dot complete. So now when we call this, this ensures that the multiplication job and the addition job have both completed because again, the multiplication job depends on the addition job. So again, we'll just print the results out to the screen. So we'll have our initial number plus two. We'll multiply that result by three and then we'll print that final result out to the screen. Lastly, we just need to dispose the native array. Come back to Unity. I'll press the number two key here. You'll see that we have four plus two is six. Multiply that by three is 18. Now then this next one is pretty similar except we're going to add one more job into the mix. So we have the subtraction job which depends on the multiplication job and the multiplication job depends on the addition job. So again, we're basically just going to initialize our native array, initialize our addition job, create our addition handle by doing uh, addition job dot schedule go ahead and initialize the values for our multiplication job, go ahead and schedule the multiplication job, again, adding the, add the addition handle as a dependency. And then finally, we're going to initialize the subtraction job. And then for the subtraction handle, when we schedule that, we'll do subtraction job dot handle, excuse me, dot schedule, and then we'll pass in the multiplication handle. So again, now when we call the subtraction handle dot complete, that's going to ensure completion of the subtraction job, multiplication job, and addition job. Come back over to Unity, hit the number three key now. So you'll see that we have four plus two is six, multiply that by three is 18, subtract four is equal to 14. Now, so these last two are basically what happens when we schedule a job that depends on two other jobs that do not depend on each other. So you'll see what I mean by that here in a sec. So here we're going to define two native arrays. So we have results one and results two. Again, these are just one size arrays with the allocator of temp job. So again, we'll just go ahead and set up the values for our addition job. We'll schedule the addition job, basically same thing as before. Uh, now, because the multiplication job doesn't depend on anything else, here we're actually going to um, initialize the the first element of the results to array to our initial number so that our multiplication job has a value to actually multiply on so again we'll just go ahead and schedule our multiplication job passing in the results to native array so again addition job has the results one native array and the multiplication job has the results two native array so they're two different they're reading from two different native arrays so they can basically read from these at the same time so there's no conflicts there. So when we actually go and schedule it, we don't need to put any dependencies on our multiplication job this time around. So now before we schedule our third job, we're actually going to do this cool function, which is the job handle dot complete all. So now here we're just passing in the two job handles. You need to make sure that we pass in a reference to these two job handles. So of course, we're just passing in the addition handle and multiplication handle. So basically this ensures that we can't go past this line until both the addition and multiplication jobs have completed. Now with this complete all function, we can actually pass in um, up to three individual jobs. So we can do just the two jobs like this, or we could even add a third one in if we wanted to. Anything past that, we can actually put all these jobs, uh, job handles into a native array, and then we can pass in the native array into the complete all function. And so that's gonna ensure that all the jobs are completed before moving along. So now let's go ahead and set these values. So basically on our add nums job, 
we'll set the value of x equal to results one at position zero and we'll set y equal to results two at position zero and then for our results container we'll just go ahead and store the results back to the result one native array no need for us to allocate a third native array in this sense. So again, we just need to create a job handle for our add nums job, and then we'll just go ahead and schedule this. Again, we don't need to pass in any dependencies here because with this complete all function, we've ensured that the necessary jobs have completed um, before we're actually scheduling this job. So now lastly, we just need to make sure that this add nums job is complete. Once it is, we can go ahead and print the results out to the screen. So coming back to here, I'll go ahead and hit the number four key. You will see that we have four plus two is six. And then our other function is four times three, which is 12. Go ahead and add six and 12, and then you get a value of 18. So now with this, we're basically gonna get the same result, but we're gonna do it in a different way. So instead of doing a complete all, we're actually gonna go ahead and combine these job handles into one job handle and then we're basically gonna make that the dependency of our third job. So again, we'll just go ahead and initialize our two native arrays, results one and result two. We'll go ahead and set up our addition job and schedule that. And then same thing that we did with our multiplication job. Again, the addition and multiplication jobs are completely independent of each other. Now this time around, we're actually gonna go ahead and set up our numbers job before we called uh, the dot complete or complete all function on the addition and multiplication jobs. Because this time around, instead of getting the values from the native array, we're gonna be passing in the native arrays themselves. And so when we set this up, we don't necessarily need it to be completed at this exact moment. Our results container one is equal to result one, and then result container two is equal to result two. Now here we'll create a job handle for combined handles, and we can use the job handle dot combine dependencies function. So here we can pass in uh, multiple job handles. So pretty much pretty similar to the complete all function. So we can pass in two job handles like we did before, uh, we don't need to pass in a reference to them. We can just pass in the handles directly. We can even pass in a third one if we want, or we can pass in a native array of job handles, just depending on however many that we have. Now we'll actually go ahead and schedule the add nums job. So this will do add nums dot schedule and we'll pass in the combined handles. So again, this basically ensures that we're not running the add results job until all of these combined handles have finished. In this case, this is the addition handle for the addition job and the multiplication handle for the multiplication job. And then lastly, we'll just call add results handle dot complete. So this is going to ensure that the add results job has completed as well as uh, the multiplication job and the addition job because those are both dependencies um, for the add results job. Then again, I'll just go ahead and print that out to the screen and just make sure that we dispose our two native arrays at the end. Coming back to Unity, I'll just press number five and you'll see that we basically have the same result as before, four plus two is six. 4 plus 3 is 12, add those together and you get 18. So anyways, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Again, this was an overview of job dependencies. So basically we can use them to ensure certain code has completed so we can safely access those values from uh, different native arrays. Once again, I showed you kind of how to do some single one-off dependencies as well as different ways of having you know, multiple dependencies where different jobs depend on each other. If you still do have any questions on this, please leave those down in the comments section below. Once again, if you do wanna download the project files from today's video, I'll include a link to that down in the description below. If you did learn something and you found today's video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for lots of more videos on things about the C-sharp job system, including the next video, I think I'm gonna be going into um, how the C-sharp job system is used in the entity component system. But if there are any other topics that you'd like me to cover related to the C-sharp job system and some of the cool things that you can do with it, uh, again, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. Of course, you can join our Discord community over at tmg.dev slash discord. Over there, we have a bunch of ECS and DOS developers, and uh, it's a great place to go and hang out, ask questions about any issues that you're running into. Um, so really excited about that community that we've been growing so far. Anyways, I think that's um, enough chit chat. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.